Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be talking about some of the most common medical abbreviations and some of my favorite ones. Um, if you are new to the healthcare field, this might be a helpful video to you. If you love those medical shows and you want to sort of understand the lingo a little bit, because I'm sure they throw it in sometimes, uh, you might enjoy this video too. Or if you just have a general interest of medicine and uh, you want to learn more, uh, this is some of the codes that we use when we're talking about uh, different types of procedures or anything else. So uh, without further ado, let's jump on in. So some of the most common medical abbreviations are related to times uh, when medications are given or treatments are supposed to be done. So that's what we're going to be focusing on this bunch. The first one is QD, so every day. That's what QD. So Q is every and then D is day. And then BID is going to be twice a day. TID, three times a day. QID, four times a day. So you sort of see the pattern there. And then this one, Q4H, so that's every four hours. And then this can continue, this could be Q6H, so every six hours, QH every hour, Q2H every two hours, or it could be Q30 minutes, every 30 minutes, whatever the doctor orders. Uh, the next one is AC, which would be before meals, and PC after meals. The way I remember these two is A comes before P in the alphabet, so A is before and then P is, you know, after, so it's after meals. Now HS means at bedtime or nighttime, so a pill might have to be given right before the person goes to bed. And then PRN, which is one of the very, very common ones given, is uh, as needed. So if somebody needs pain medication as needed, uh, whether it's a narcotic or Tylenol, something like that, they have it PRN. So it would usually say PRN every four hours or every six hours. So there is a time base on that one as well, but it's also stated PRN. So you might not have to give it only if the person requests it or uh, the discretion of the nurse. The next set of medical abbreviations are routes of administration for medications. So the first one we're going to be looking at is PO. So that means by mouth or per os if you're speaking Latin and uh, this is so a pill so a pill will be giving by mouth they'll take it orally and that's how they get into the system IM is intramuscular so a flu shot or any type of injection that has to go into the muscle IV is you know intravenous or most people just know it as IV so if it's a, an intravenous fluid or a medication that has to be given through IV whatever that might be uh, SC or SQ depending on where you are would be subcutaneous so that again is an injection but instead of going into the muscle it goes into the fat tissue and that's one of the easier injections to give and then sl which is sublingual and that just means under the tongue so you put the little tablet underneath the tongue and it dissolves and that's how the person gets the medication or how the body absorbs it i remember that one because of language is uh, it's from your tongue right so lingual language are sort of the same thing so that's how you remember that it goes underneath or sub the tongue underneath the tongue now those are the really common ways that we administer medication there are other ways but these were the main ones so i wanted to focus on those ones now the next set so dx is diagnosis so if they have a diagnosis of stroke or heart failure or whatever uh, they might have multiple diagnoses and so it would say DX and then list all the medical diagnosis and then history is sort of the same idea uh, if they have a history of stroke or if they have a history of a car accident or whatever um, that would be under the HX AX is assessment so when somebody does an assessment it could also be written as an AX TX is treatment and RX is pretty common. You might see it on a prescription pad because it means prescription. OD is right eye, OS is left eye, and OU is both eyes. So this can be used for informing somebody where they need to put eye drops or identifying a problem with one of the eyes and just being able to relay the information that it's this specific eye. And uh, PERLA is pupils are equal round, reactive to light, and accommodating. This is often used in a neurological assessment to make sure that the eyes are functioning right and that there's no head injury or something like that. So what people will do is they'll shine a light in the person's eye and notice if they're round and they're reacting. So when you shine the light, they should constrict, and when you remove it, they should dilate. And uh, when accommodating, what that means 
is that when one pupil dilates or constricts, the other one should be as well. They shouldn't be doing their own separate thing. They should be uh, following each other. The next abbreviation is CAP, which stands for capsule, and that's just like the image that I'm showing on screen right now. Those types of pills you can actually pop open and there's a powder inside and that's the medication itself. Um, and then the next one is TAB, which is another type of pill. It's a tablet. So you can cut these in half, you can crush them, you can take them whole depending on the dose. The next abbreviation is GTT, and that means drops. So that's a good way to preface eye drops. They'll tell you how many drops uh, are required in the eye. The next abbreviation is NPO. So we know what PO means, and that's by mouth. So NPO is nothing by mouth, and that means food, fluid, medication. Usually they give it another route, and uh, this is for people who are generally really sick. They are not able to keep anything down, so they just keep them NPO. The next set of abbreviations are vitals. So T, temperature, body temperature, not the temperature of the room. Uh, P is the pulse. R is their respiration rate. BP is blood pressure. And O2 or SpO2, depending on how it's written, is the uh, oxygen saturation level. That is how much oxygen they have in the blood as a percentage. DNR is the next one, and this is very commonly seen as well, and that means do not resuscitate. So if somebody has a heart attack or they go unconscious and they're evidently their heart stops, you wouldn't perform CPR, you just let them go. SOB is shortness of breath. That one's quite uh, self-explanatory. Uh, VSS is vital signs are stable and NAI, no apparent injuries. Common if somebody falls and you don't find that there's anything wrong with them, you know, there's no injuries that were sustained. These next abbreviations are associated with the abdomen and just serve as a landmarking tool for people. So what we'll do is we'll split it up into four imaginary quadrants and this serves for landmarking. So LLQ, left lower quadrant, LUQ, left upper, RLQ, right lower, and R-U-Q, right upper. The next few abbreviations really don't have any sort of theme, but I just wanted to add them because I thought they're pretty common and quite important. So D-M is diabetes, N slash V is nausea and vomiting, U-T-I is a urinary tract infection, STAT means right now. So if you're calling somebody uh, Dr. Dorian to the ER stat, it means that Dr. Dorian has to go to the emergency room right now. Or if a medication is to be given stat, it means given right now. If something is given stat, usually it's important, so you got to do it right now. Uh, BM is, everybody sort of knows that one, a bowel movement. Uh, CBG is capillary blood glucose, so when you're talking about diabetics, uh, the amount of sugar in their blood, uh, when we measure it, that's their CBG and CXR is a uh, chest x-ray. And those are the main medical abbreviations I could come up with at the top of my head. I think these are some of the more important ones and the more common ones. If you have a favorite one or if there's one that I missed, leave it in the comments below. If uh, you like this video, give it a like. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please subscribe, it'd be great. Um, and have a wonderful day, thank you.